Well, ladies and gentlemen, Berta, we're here. Trusting that you are doing well, my sister, my brother. So I am the founder of Living Waters Movement, where I inspired women uh, to have a closer relationship with God through prayer. So how are you today? How are you today? Hope that you are doing well. So may I ask you, did you take time out to study? Remember, you must, must, must study the Word. And we know it's so late on planet Earth, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stayed, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3.16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I tell you, it's preparation day. So how are you? So happy preparation day, my sister and my brother. So scripture reading is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6, and it says, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's get into our topic today, and we are still in the truth about angel truth about angels you know we want the truth and nothing but the truth and we are in chapter 13 and it's the incarnation and early life of christ then uh then the subtitle will be incarnation a profound mystery the contemplating the incarnation of christ in humanity we stand baffled before an unfathomable mystery that the human mind cannot comprehend the more we reflect upon it, the more amazing does it appear. How wide is the contrast between the divinity of Christ and the helpless infant in Bethlehem, Bethlehem manger? How can we span the distance between the mighty God and a helpless child? And yet the creator of the world, he in whom was the fullness of the Godhead bodily, was manifested in a helpless babe in the main in the manger. Far higher than any of the angels, equal with the Father in dignity and glory, and yet wearing the grab of humanity. Divinity and humanity were mysteriously combined, and man and God became one. It is in this union that we find the hope of our fallen race. So that concludes my topic, my sister, my brother, the incarnation and the early life of Christ, and the subtitle, the incarnation, a profound mystery. So we can never understand it, my sister, my brother. So um, Monday, on Monday, we're going to go into uh, the universe was watching, the universe was watching. That would be our topic for Monday. So may I share with you my devotion? Hold on. There we go. Blend in unity. Beloved, if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. And this is coming from uh, 1 John 4, 11. 1 John 4, 11. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you, Father, to continue, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, it's stay here. The world is looking with gratification and disunion. Seem among Christian. Infidelity is well pleased. God calls for a change amongst his people. Unity with Christ and with one another is our only safety in these last days. Let us not make it possible for Satan to point to our church member saying, Behold how these people, standing on the banner of Christ, hate one another. We have nothing to fear from them while they spend more strength fighting one another than in the warfare with my forces. After the descent of the Holy Spirit, the disciple went forth to proclaim a risen Savior. 
their one desire, the salvation of soul. Their one desire, the salvation of souls. They rejoice in the sweetness of communion with saints. They were tender, thoughtful, self-denying, willing to make any sacrifice for the truth's sake. In their daily association with one another, they reveal the love that Christ had commanded them to reveal. By unselfish words and deeds, they try to kindle their love in other hearts. But the early Christian began to look for defects in one another, dwelling upon mistakes, encouraging a sub... Um, let me go back. Let me go back. He said, dwelling upon mistakes, encouraging suspicion and doubt, giving way to unkind criticism. They lost sight of the Savior and of the great love he had revealed for sinners. They became more strict in regards to outward ceremonies, more particular about the theories of fate, more severe in their criticism, in their zeal to condemn others, they themselves err. They forgot the lesson of brotherly love that Christ has taught, and sadnessly and sadness of all, they were unconscious of their loss. They did not realize that happiness and joy were going out of their lives, and that soon there they would walk in darkness having shut the love of God out of their hearts. The Apostle John realized that brotherly love was decreasing in the church, and he dwelt particularly upon this point. Up to the day of his death, he urged upon believers the constant exercise of love for one another. In the church of God today, brotherly love is greatly lacking. Let me read that. In the church of God today, brotherly love is greatly lacking. Many of those who profess to love the Savior neglect to love those who are united with them in Christian fellowship. Harmony and unity exist amongst men of various disposition in the strongest weakness that can be bore that God has sent his Son into the world to save sinners. It is our privilege to bear this witness. But in order to do this, we must place ourselves under Christ's command. Let me repeat that. But in order for us to do this, we must place ourselves under Christ's command. Our character must be molded in harmony with Christ's character. Our will must be surrendered to his will. Should I repeat that? Our character must be molded in harmony with Christ's character. Our will must be surrendered to his will. So that concludes my devotion, blend in unity. So we have to love one another, my sister and brother. We don't need to know each other, but we still require to love one another. So let me uh, close with my hymn. And it says, Oh Jesus, I have promised. O oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee through the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. O oh, let me feel thee near me. The world is ever near. I see the sight that dazzle. The tempted sounds I hear. My foe are ever near me, that meaning my enemies are ever near me, around me within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin. Mm. Here's the last verse. O oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to call. No, no, no. O oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee, that where thou art in glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee through, to the end. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow, 
my master and my friend. Mm. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. When we came into the church, my sister and brother, we all have promised that we will follow the Lord. We all have promised that we will be the example that he has called us to be. But we all have failed in that area. So all we can do, my sister and brother, is say, Lord, I made a, me I made a mess, Lord. Can you help me, Father God? Help me, help me, help me. And all we have to do is that do that, my sister and brother, and knowing that he will help you. He will help you. Why? Because he has promised that he will never leave us or forsake us. All we are the one that leaves him. He never leaves us. So we have to say, Lord, you know, give me a new, um, a new revelation. Give me a new deeper love for thee. And my sister and brother, once you pray that prayer, just believe that he has done that for you, regardless of what else is going on in your life. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message. Father God, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you are God, that you sit high, you look low, and you have seen our individual needs, Father God. As our prayers go up, Father God, and we're asking you to cleanse us, Father God, that you have you are doing that right now, Father God. We know that you are in the most holy place interceding on our behalf. You are our high priest. So, Father God, we ask you for healing. We ask you, Father God, to continue to give us the strength, the power, Father God, that we need in these last days. Father God, we ask you, Father God, that we get you, that you would give us the love that we need for one another, Father God. Father God, if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you'll forgive us and make us whiter than snow, Father God. And we also give you permission, Father God, to take the empty vessels, fill us up with the love that we need for one another, with the power to run from sin, Father God. And Father God, we'll forever, forever give you all the praise, Father God, the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so if this was a blessing to you, can you do me a favor? Hit the like button, make a comment, hit the share button, follow me over YouTube on the Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and thank you guys so much for going over there and helping me grow my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your time, for stopping by here. I mean, you know, you could have been doing a whole a whole lot of other other stuff, right? Because we all always have a whole to-do list, right? But thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. And so with, for those of you that's already celebrating Sabbath, happy Sabbath. And we know Sabbath is Friday. And we're talking about the Bible Sabbath. And we can go into uh, Exodus uh, 20, verses 8 through 11. talks about remember the Sabbath day. And it's from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. It's always been 24-hour cycle. And also, if you want um, a more in-depth study of the Sabbath, you could go to Sabbath.org or 